Hi, I'm Jay Carter, and I'm the chief editor of 20th Century China, and I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce a little bit about the journal, uh, its history, where it's come from, uh, as well as where it is today, and some of the directions that we see it moving in the future. We hope that this will give you a sense of what we think is one of the more exciting, innovative, and important journals for scholars to turn to when they're looking for current research on Chinese history, culture, politics, economy, and society. The journal was founded in 1983 uh, when it was called Republican Studies Newsletter. And since that time, it's changed names twice. Uh, it's changed to Republican China and then to 20th Century China. And those changes reflect a broadening of the journal's scope. Both in terms of chronology, the journal now accepts manuscripts ranging from the late Qing Dynasty up through the turn of the 21st century. It also reflects a broadening of the journal's disciplinary scope. Um, and we've always tried to include scholars from a variety of disciplines, not just history, which is the core of the journal in many ways, but also scholars of literature, uh, anthropologists, political scientists, economists. Um, and I think that those can be seen if you look through the table of contents of recent issues. The current issue, for instance, uh, includes two articles that are by self-identified historians, but two others uh, that are not. One is by a political scientist looking at the Gao Gong affair of the 1950s, and another is by a scholar of literature. Uh, and I think that that interdisciplinarity is a real strength of the journal and a hallmark of it over, over the years. Another strength of the journal, uh, in terms of diversity again, uh, is the global nature of its editorial board. And I think that helps to encourage contributions uh, from across the planet. Um, we have um, a number of scholars based in North America, of course, but many who are also based outside of North America. So Europe, uh, Asia, uh, and Australia are well represented on the editorial board. Uh, and these include some of the leading scholars uh, of our generation, people like Prasenjit Dwara, um, who's at Singapore, uh, Wenxin Ye at Berkeley, uh, William Kirby at, at Harvard, uh, Keith Shapa at Loyola, uh, and, and many others. And I think that that quality, um, that having an editorial board of that caliber helps to ensure is another real strength of the journal and something that, that I'm able as editor to capitalize on in attracting contributors. Last thing I'll say for now is that we have some really exciting developments going forward um, reflecting our new partnership with Maney Publishing who is publishing the journal starting in 2011. Um, two specific ones that I can point to uh, are First, a special issue on music, uh, and the special issue on music is focusing particularly on Shanghai and the colonial era, so in the, the first half of the 20th century, um, and it's particularly looking at the interaction among the different foreign and Chinese communities in the city and the way they came together to produce music that was unique to this period, uh, to this time and place. The other uh, is a special issue that's going to be happening probably about 18 months from now, uh, and that's looking at the May 4th era, uh, so the May 4th movement and the years following it, using new scholarship by some of the leading scholars uh, across the world to try and reinterpret this period uh, and understand its implications uh, now as we're moving well into the, the 21st century and, and approaching the, uh, the 100th anniversary of, of that important event. But for these and many other reasons, I hope that you'll consider subscribing to 20. 20th Century China, and um, I look forward to, uh, to sharing the results of, of our work in the future.